Our next presentation is from the avocado team. You'll notice that the flavour of today, literally, is around fruit, veggies and starch. It's all good for you. Tomorrow, of course, will be meat and others. So we're on to avocados now. And this is the avocado export team led by Shara Jones of Costa and uh, Associate Professor James McGree from Queensland University of Technology and Professor Darrell Joyce from Queensland um, DAF. And it'll be presented by a key researcher on the team, Aperva Kamani. So welcome, Aperva. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, this project exists to improve the avocado export supply chain to deliver Australian premium product and reduce avocado export claims. And, and at the end of the day, this project could, could generate significant additional revenue to the avocado industry through uh, exports to Asia. So welcome, Aperva, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I'll just share my screen here. Looks good, Aperva. Yeah, thank you. All right, I'll begin. Um, so, as you all know, um, my name is Apurva and I'm currently working as a research associate at uh, Queensland University of Technology with the School of Math. And uh, this project uh, that I'm working on is called uh, Predictive Modeling to Improve the Quality of Avocados Exported to Asian Markets. Um, so this project is being developed uh, collaboratively, uh, collaboratively between our team at KUT and then, of course, uh, Shara Jones and colleagues from the Costa Group and uh, Daryl and his colleagues from the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Yeah. So um, on now when we see what is the project about, it is the project focuses on the development of the data and expert informed decision aid tool, embedding a predictive model to help improve the quality of avocados on arrival in Asia. And the first and the foremost thing uh, we came across is the claims data. So basically what is a claim? Uh, a claim refers to the batch of fruit that was rejected at the receiving country due to low quality. And then because of that, it is not paid for. So uh, the project aims at reducing uh, such claims by monitoring the entire supply chain of the fruit from the pre-harvest uh, to the exports and uh, after the fruit forwarder. So uh, moving to the next slide. Um, uh, what is, uh, we can see, uh, the purpose of the project development. So we all know that uh, avocados are highly nutritional fruit and uh, they are high in good fat, which helps reduce bad cholesterol. So apart from this, it consists of other minerals like potassium, folate, vitamins such as B6, vitamin C, and vitamin E. So due to its rich uh, quality, it remains a popular uh, fruit locally as well as internationally. So uh, since Costa is a leading grower of avocados, they aim at providing the best quality avocado to the Asian population. And we know that uh, Costa loves their avocados and their premium quality, or we can say the export quality is uh, called lavocados. So uh, the first thing uh, that comes uh, in picture is uh, the decision aid tool. So that is being developed by the team at KUT. So the decision aid tool will help Costa make informed decisions during the entire process of fruit development, starting from pre-harvest till the fruit reaches the fruit forwarder for exports. So uh, we would be working on the development of the predictive model based on historical, as well as the current data sets being developed and stored in the new system, which is uh, called the FMS, which is the field management system. So the decision aid tool will aid in addressing two major concerns. The first one being planning adjustments to improve the food quality. And the second one being allowing uh, the supply chain planning to meet the demands. So both of the th these things are based on the quality of the fruit and, uh, and our aim is to provide a base uh, for that decision-making. 
So fortunately, uh, our team at QUT got a chance to visit the Costa Farms at Childers as well as far north Queensland. Uh, we learned a lot about the harvest practices, the age of trees, uh, body rots on, per, uh, and on the fruit and many other things. So this is just a small clip from our visit there. And we also had a chance uh, to visit the pack shed, which is uh, this slide here. So, the, uh, so here we can see that on the left, the fruit is being sprayed by a fertilizer agent. And in the next one, it is being dried. And uh, after that, it is hand-picked and segregated depending upon the quality and uh, how it has been assessed mechanically. And then uh, the, uh, it is packed and the premium fruit quality uh, fruit is then uh, stored in cold storage before it is sent for exports. So we were fortunate enough uh, to see the actual, uh, how the data is being collected and how it is being monitored at the pack shed itself. It was actually a state of the art packing shed with mechanical sorting of the boxes and identification of rods using electronic scanners. So uh, coming to the major data sets of the project, uh, the first one is of course uh, Costa. So among the pre-harvest data sets include uh, the dry matter, which is basically the record of the content of the fruit minus uh, the water. So they are actually dried and then the dry matter content is noted. And, we, and they say that it is uh, the range of a uh, good dry matter is between uh, 23 to 26, but we're still speculating, we're still talking about these and understanding uh, what would be considered as the exportable quality. And then the second one is fruit size, which is a sample set of fruits uh, is monitored regularly uh, for their growth. Um, in case of the uh, post-harvest data sets, uh, we came across uh, the downgrade analysis check, which includes the information on body rots, insect stings and pepper spotting among others. And the other checks include incoming bin checks, arrival checks and dispatch checks, which are performed when the fruit leaves um, the DC. Uh, apart from this, the Costa is also working on the development of field management system, which would also include irrigation details, fertilizer spray quantity and count and uh, many other things, which are still not being recorded on the farm. Um, the next one comes is the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. So that is an important data set which is uh, being collected over time. And it is related to the lab experiments on the sample fruit in a simulated farm environment. And, uh, and it, uh, it is again noting the key details or the key indicators of food quality, which is dry matter and uh, nitrogen, calcium and other nutritional content of fruit. The other one is a company working with Costa called The Yield. They have established weather stations on major farms to monitor the uh, different climatic conditions, such as temperature, pressure, rainfall, etc. This data is regularly sent to Costa and then to QUT. So we get this data uh, maybe uh, in a three months time, and uh, then we we are able to analyze that information. Uh, the next one comes is the Escovox temperature loggers. This is again a company which is working in lieu with Costa. And uh, the organization is responsible to track temperature of the fruit from pickup from the DC by the freight forwarder till the point it is received by the destination country. And uh, the next one is uh, there are checks that has been uh, that have been established by the receive uh, by the Costa at the receiving end also. So the country which receives the fruit is also now checking the arrival um, the fruit quality, and then that data is then provided to Costa back. And um, the last one here is Provote management, management, which was actually contracted by Costa, but now it's over. But this organization was uh, responsible for providing site maps of the farms with the help of satellite monitoring. These maps include data related to NDVI indices and tree vigor for the whole, uh, for the whole farm. So we have got this in those images and we are in the process of uh, analyzing the information in them. Um, So uh, when it comes to the supply chain mapping, uh, so we have carefully uh, mapped the various data sets of the entire supply chain, starting from pre-harvest to the receiving country. So in case of pre-harvest, the data sets include, we can see here, uh, dry matter, uh, the partner, which is the yield data, and the NDVI and tree vigor indices provided by the yield. 
and um, and the prohort management. And then the last one is the uh, sample experiments pro uh, performed by the DAF uh, and the different quality checks they perform in a simulated env environment on the fruit. Uh, moving on uh, from the pre-harvest, the fruit goes to the post-harvest pack shed, where the different checks are performed in the form of bin checks, uh, downgrade analysis checks, inline checks, and then the fruit reaches the DC, which could be uh, any of the place in Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane, and then uh, different dispatch checks are performed in order to analyze uh, the quality of the fruit. And in the end, um, the receiving country also performs some arrived, arrival checks. So here I have mentioned uh, claim documentation. Uh, one of the issues uh, or uh, of uh, Costa right now is that this claim documentation is not centralized, and we do not have more information on the claims that have come throughout the years in the past. So uh, we're trying to address that now and uh, moving forward, we might have more information as the arrival checks are now in place and we would have more information on the quality of the fruit once it reaches the destination. Uh, moving on, um, here we see that uh, uh, we, uh, we go to the uh, issues of the historical data sets. So we know that there are different data sets provided in terms of, as we have seen in the previous slides, there is fruit size, dry matter, and different incoming checks and dispatch checks. But the, but uh, but what are the issues that we have come across after the analysis of the historical data? So um, one of the major issues is that uh, uh, the Costa lacks a fully integrated digital data capture system. So, uh, so it makes it difficult for the predictive model to be developed uh, because uh, in case of the development of a predictive model, we need a completely linked data set, which would be able to assess um, a different information from the farm. But um, due to the lack of an integrated system, uh, this is still not possible and we're still uh, progressing towards the development of one. Apart from that, uh, there is a gap in uh, pre-harvest and post-harvest data sets. So there, we're trying to find a link between the two and understand how they could be linked up together to form a complete data set. There is also a lack of information on uh, the data provided by Costa and the data provided from Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, which is the simulated data or the simulated uh, tests performed on the fruit. So there is a lack of information on how these to be these uh, are needed to be linked. Um, the next one is the missing value. So as we know that it is manually collected data, so it, it it sometimes has missing information or it sometimes has errors in the information. So that is another issue we have come up with the historical data sets. And the last one is um, where to start. <laughs> so the question arises is what is the first and the foremost um, a uh, key indicator or uh, or you can say the most important key indicator of the fruit quality so where do we start so um so what were the solutions of the issues for the historical data sets we moved to finding the solutions and we reported the issues to the costa team and um, the project managers and at costa uh, started building up an expert elicited elicited document uh, to help us understand which of the indicators would be considered as essential for the identification of food quality. So uh, this document, which was created, uh, which actually it is in progress, so it is still being created, so which is being developed is a comprehensive, uh, is based on the comprehensive uh, discussion between Costa project managers and their agro agronomists, along with the team of experienced researchers working with the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. So this document will contain uh, the different key indicators of fruit quality, and then it would give us a way to understand and to begin with where, uh, which data sets we are lacking and which data sets are already given and we can start with the uh, modeling. So uh, with each iteration of the development of this document, our team at QUT produces prototypes in terms of decision trees. So in case of version one, the prototype one of decision A, uh, decision A tool or the, uh, the paper-based decision tree was created. And in case of second version, we also developed a workable prototype in R Shiny, which I will show in the future slides. So um, apart from this, a field management system. So we know that what is the issue in the data set. We know what is the solution to the data set that we would be creating an expert elicited document, which would list the key indicators. But apart from this, Costa has taken an initiative to develop a field management system, which would be storing 
uh, everything that is being collected on the farm, every every activity that is uh, done on the farm, and every data set that could be uh, uh, calculated or collected on the farm would be stored in a field management system. And uh, the best part is that this field management system is being developed in parallel to the project uh, what we are developing. So it gives us a leverage to provide some uh, to and fro feedback of uh, the data collection system, and it helps us understand how it will look in future. So um, some of the key indicators that have been listed so far in, within the two iterations we did are uh, extreme heat, extreme cold, uh, flood storm, spray. So all these uh, uh, listed here have already been understood by the Costa team and they have provided a feedback to us that these are the things that we need to focus on to start with. And it would be building because we know in, uh, it's an agile uh, project management approach. So it will be building on um, uh, and it will uh, it will be iteratively built and the decision trees will be built too. So moving to the next one, we see here the decision tree prototypes. We so far have developed two different decision tree prototypes for the uh, according to the document provided by uh, Costa. So I have added here a glimpse of um, one of the decision trees in which we can see that uh, how it performs and how it uh, it flows throughout the um, system. So when we see uh, in case of extreme heat within the two weeks of harvest, so this is the first condition we check in the decision tree. If it is a yes, that means if it is greater than 40 uh, degrees Celsius for three days straight, then we say that it should the fruit should not be considered as an exportable quality. But if it is a no, we go to the next condition, which is an extreme cold or uh, uh, during the uh, fruit growth. And according to that, we have three different conditions and which is plus three is a non-negotiable, uh, like it's not to be exported. Then one to three is uh, we check for halo effect or vascular browning. And uh, if it's uh, if it's extreme cold and it it there is no extreme cold in case of that, we go to the next condition. So this is how uh, the entire decision tree is built on the different key indicators identified by the experts at Costa and DAP. As I spoke about the, uh, uh, as I spoke about the uh, workable prototype, so our team has also worked on the development of our shiny prototype so we all know that R is a programming language used for data visualization and statistical analysis. But uh, in our case, uh, we have included R Shiny, which is a package uh, which is uh, uh, helps the user to build interactive web apps using both the statistical power and interactivity of the modern web. So in case of R Shiny, the best part is it is remote. It could be accessed remotely. It could be transferred easily, and it can uh, it can also take information from the user and run the app at the background. So here I have included the architecture of the tool developed in which uh, there is a function which is sitting at the back, which is depending on the decision tree prototypes created, and the front end in the R Shiny is aided by the values entered by the user, and the results are produced on the basis of uh, uh, the details provided by the user and the program running at the back, which is based itself based on the decision tree provided. So uh, in the next slide, I will show how the prototype looks like. So here we have uh, on the left side, the image, which is uh, uh, the first version of the prototype we have created. In this case, we select the region, uh, which farm we are selecting and which fruit type it is, because we know that avocados come in different varieties and we are here working on has. Uh, avocados. So in the second image, we can see that the user inputs different values for the dry matter, for uh, the rainfall, uh, for the time from pick to bin. So these are the conditions that have already been addressed and uh, considered as key indicators of fruit quality. So uh, once the user clicks on the result button, it gives us information if it is an exportable quality or not. So either it should be exported or not. So this is something which is com completely based on the paper-based decision tree created, but uh, in the future, we want it to be informed by the data. So when we move to the uh, inform data-informed decision, uh, decision aid tool, it will again consist of a similar architecture, 
But at the back end, instead of having an if else loop or an uh, or a programming a programmed decision tree with a yes and no, it might include a probabilistic approach towards the results. And it will include uh, different data sets, which would be coming from historical data sets collected, as well as from the live data collected in the field management system, one, once it is, of course, up and running. The R model will be in, uh, embedded within the front end of R Shiny, which is an object, which would be an object file. And it could be an R model in decision tree, a random forest, a multinomial regression, or a combination of two. And in the end, it would produce results in the form of a yes and no, or in the form of a meter, which would be a probabilistic result. It, it completely depends on how uh, Costa wants uh, the end result to be. And we're still in conversation with the team and um, of course with the FMS team, how it should look and feel and how it will be presented in the future. So um, to sum up, um, I would say that, uh, as I said, it, there's still um, more than a year left in the project and we're, we're taking uh, an iterative and an agile approach for the development. So the iterative, there would be an iterative development of the expansion of the decision tree. And then there would be the predictive model will be based on the data sets provided as well as collected over time. And uh, of course the R shiny prototype would be uh, improved in time too. And then um, we would be able to understand uh, how we would integrate the FMS system with the decision aid tool once it's ready. And um, we would also include user information within the DAT. So that includes who could access what part of the decision aid tool. So is it possible uh, that everyone can see and access the information or is it would it be a login based system? And um, the last one is again, uh, iterative development of the front end as well as the back end of the decision aid tool. So yeah, I think, um, uh, we're making good progress and we have uh, we have a workable prototype now, but it's just that uh, there is still uh, a lot of progress and a lot of work left and we've got time. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much on behalf of us all and thank you to the broader team that you're representing as well. Mm -hmm. um, a, a question for you as, you as one of the key researchers, could you share with us one of your Eureka moments? <laughs> Some of my Eureka moments yeah, in this project. Yeah, um, one of it, one of uh, I would say the first one would be the the first uh, prototype, the decision tree when it was ready and up and running, and we and I went to uh, the Childers farm and I met the agronomist there myself and uh, ran through the steps of the key indicators and how they would be analyzed and how would they decide whether it is a yes or a no to be like, a, is a yes go or a no go to the exports. And, um, and the feedback I received from them, they were, uh, they were really excited to see how it's progressing. And, um, and they understood the concept of key indicators because they said that, yes, we want these to be checked first and the rest could wait. So that was, I think, was my first Eureka moment, I guess, in the project development. And, and again, it's an amazing, it's a common thread that, that yeah. all important feedback and insights given by the industry partners. So, um, <laughs> okay, while, while, we're, while we're on that same thread, of pivot, what about some of the gnarly moments? What Did you ever find yourself going, oh, goodness me, how am I going to get through this? And what was it and how did you deal with it? Um, yeah, so as I uh, discussed here, one of the issues of the historical data was that I couldn't find a link between the pre-harvest and the post-harvest data sets. Like pre-harvest, uh, you, uh, you've got a dry matter, you've got fruit size, but once they are binned together, they, they attach a batch number to it, and then that batch number goes throughout the post-harvest data sets. But there is no link between the two. And that is when I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to create an integrated system here? So we went back to Costa and we said that we need a, an integrated system here, which would be recording everything and it would be streamlined. And they started talking about the field management system and the, the, uh, you know, the, the entire uh, linking up of the supply chain. So yeah, that was, I think it's progressing well. And we've met once the FMS team also. So yeah, it's going good. <laughs> so really your gnarly moments or your gnarly challenge became a eureka moment for the other side. Yes, exactly. The other yeah. way around. So yeah. um, no, that's very insightful. Thank you. I have a question from Carol here. Um, I'll, I'll read it out direct. In, in competition commission inquiries in Australia, the horticulture industry raised issues that perfect fruit and veggies 
was being rejected by supermarkets, that is a destination, um, even when they'd over-ordered or received a reduced price from another grower. So in other words, may not have actually been directly quality, but they were still being rejected. Yeah. Um, is it possible this happens also in avocado exports? And does this approach help mitigate those sorts of dubious claims? Yeah. Um, with the uh, start of the project, they didn't have the uh, dispatch checks, which is the last check which is done to check the quality of the fruit at the DC. And they did not have any arrival checks uh, when the fruit reaches the, um, the destination. So there was a gap there and there was no claims data available. So uh, our team at QUT suggested that we should have a check when it leaves and when it reaches uh, the destination. So you would be able to link the two and see if, if within two days, because with the expert opinion, we know within two days or within five days or within 15 days, how much of the fruit or how does the fruit react or how does the fruit progress? So with the dispatch and the arrival checks now, uh, being done in place. So we would be able to compare the two. And I think this kind of um, uh, events happening might get reduced. And I'm really positive about it because earlier there was no information of how the fruit is reaching. It's just the claim data that is being uh, that is coming back. And then you're not getting paid for the effort you've put throughout the year. So, <laughs> so I think with these checks in place and, um, and Shara was very excited about this approach that we should do this and it will create a complete link of how the fruit reached. So that is one of the things I think would help in solving that issue. So um, I've got to ask you this question. So, you know, this project is, is another one that's been a really important one to us from, early, from very early in our genesis, where we learned a lot about what it means to for our projects to work the way we wanted them to work. That's all sides, all parties. Yeah. There's no, and Shara, for example, or credit to Shara, has put enormous amounts of work from the Costa side in getting that connection made. And you yeah. parachuted in at a really critical moment in the project and, in my opinion, made a massive difference. What do you feel has been the, the, the trajectory of the relationship with Costa and what do you think are the most important ingredients to bring to make that relationship between your team and the Costa team, for example, work? Um, I think the relationship has, is amazing like they they respond really fast to any queries we have regular meetings and we 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 actually sit together in meeting rooms and discuss these issues and uh, and even that like the department of agriculture and fisheries uh, brings all of us together on one table and start discussing and invites other people to see how they have done in the past so that's like an amazing um, chemistry we have right now and I feel like um, one of the things uh, I feel is important in any kind of, uh, you know, full collaboration is to be patient, like to, to wait for your email to be responded, to wait for the results to be produced, to wait for the data set to come to you. Because once you get impatient about stuff, that's where the, uh, you know, it doesn't click. So <laughs> I think our team, as well as Costa's team, as well as DAV's team has been very patient of the whole project. And it's, that is why it's progressing really well. And it's like, it's, I, it's, it's still one year apart, but I see myself delivering a very good product in the end, I guess. So <laughs> I feel like uh, we've all been working really well on this. Yeah. Thank you, Akuva. By your own definition, that makes you almost an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So look, on behalf of us all, uh, thank you and your extended project team for a really insightful presentation. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.